Right, um, I grew up pretty much, you know, middle class, single mom, you know, divorced parents. And I actually grew up in Lubadze. I went to Crescent. And my love for music came from, you know, seeing um, a girl DJ that beatboxed um, during an interview. And I was like, oh my goodness, I really want to do that. I want to be able to beatbox. So every single day, walking from school to go catch a taxi to go home, I'd keep on practicing. I'd just be practicing beatboxing. And my brother later on told me, do you know hip hop? Do you know like that hip hop actually like translates um, from, from beatboxing and it's like a whole thing. You can learn how to dance. And I was like, oh cool, like when you start dancing and that's where my love for, for the arts pretty much came from. I was dancing before I could walk, you know, like I would hold on to like tables and things and I'd just be like moving back and like kind of dancing and every time they played music, yeah, I'd be twerking. <laughs> I was like a little one year old and yeah, I've always loved, I've always loved the arts. Because um, rap comes from poetry, it's like rhythm and poetry. So I started off with poetry and my best friend actually, Nature used to like always inspire me because she wrote a lot and she'd recite her poetry to me. And I was like, oh my goodness, I want to do that too. And my brother told me, you know, why don't you put a little rhythm to the, the poetry? And I started listening to a lot of Lauren Hill, you know, a lot of um, MC Light, you know, the Biggies and the Tupacs, Eminem especially. And um, I started like practicing. The thing is, I started off beatboxing for a lot of like um, the rappers in the industry, Bo Ora, you know, Apollo Diablo. They watched me pretty much grow up. You know, Civil Knight was there. I was there when Civil had won the competition and I was beatboxing for him. And um, so translating from that, I, I presented a show called The Foundation Next Level on Ibotswana. And I was pretty much hosting a, a hip hop show. And from there, it was like, okay, you've been doing this for so long. When are you going to jump in front of the camera and like start rapping and making the music? So I met my first manager, Anke, who's the um, founder of Hudson. And he got me to the studio. I didn't think anything was really going to come of it. You know, we recorded Hudson and um, we put it on the internet. Next thing you know, it got like over a thousand downloads the first day. And I was just like, what's going on? Radio literally went and took it from the internet and started playing it. I didn't even have to take it to radio. So for me, I was like, okay, there's something happening here. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to take this seriously. Right, I was very reserved growing up as a child. As much as I loved to do all these attention-seeking things, I think that was a way of me avoiding for people to see like who I really am, so I'd use a distraction for them to get to know that instead of like the real me. So I think that's why I changed my music so much. Is I don't want to be predictable. I don't want people to know what's coming next, you know. I'll drop like a really hardcore hip-hop song, and then I'd come out with a song, Freedom Calls, you know, like about gender, based violence, abuse, and then I'd come out with Mamu Mwato, which is like a Kwaito Kwasa, and then I'm releasing a dance song, electro song with German dollar next. So I don't want to be able to say somebody's like, okay, so this sounds like Sasa. I don't want anybody to ever be able to say, yeah, this is typical of me. I want them to know that I can, I can be given anything and I'll be able to work with it. Well, the funny thing is, you know, back then when people were like Nicki Minaj, like, um, you kind of remind me of Nicki. I used to get so angry. I'd be like, oh, why Nicki, Nicki, Nicki? But to be honest with you, as time went and as I kept on going in the industry, she did um, come to inspire me as I went because I'd go over her interviews and I just wanted to see how it was for her to be in an industry, you know, that was so male, I don't want to say dominated, it's not dominated, but it's just male filled. And I wanted to see how she, like how she expressed, managed to stay that long. And as I went, I was like, wow, she's a businesswoman. She does so many things. She has a clothing line. She has perfumes. She's an actress, which I would love to do as well. I've always been in love with the arts. So she came to inspire me as, as I went along. And then J. Cole. J. Cole is the love of my life and he doesn't even know it. Like, we're gonna get married. He's divorcing, he's divorcing his wife and it's game over. So J. Cole definitely, lyrically, you can probably hear it a lot in my flows that I kinda get a lot of influence from J. Cole. I could literally like be anywhere. I could be taking a shower, I'd start with a melody, because usually the way that I make my music, I don't just go to the studio and pick a beat. 
I make up the beat for myself in my head and like, you know, start writing as I go. And when I get to the studio, I tell them, okay, I want a bass like and that's when, like, that's, I had to start beatboxing in order to be able to do that. So I think I had to round up my character, you know, and my, my musical character in order to make the kind of music that I want to make. So yeah, it could be anyway. I could be even sitting on the toilet seat. Y'all didn't need to know that really. <laughs> I could be sitting alone in a car. I could be taking a walk. So yeah, different things are my inspiration. I think first of all, I think because now I'm going to open a marketing and PR office, which I forgot to mention, I'm going to be partnering up with my current manager just now. Just because of the experiences I went through when I was a younger, ch a younger girl walking into studios and like producers literally, you know, taking advantage of the fact that I'm like young and naive. I remember there's one studio I went to where this guy was literally like, if you don't have the money to pay, you're going to have to do something else. And I don't want another female to have to go through that, which is why I'm starting up the marketing and PR firm. And just to make sure that they're going to the right places. So those have been the challenges. And just, you know, right now I'm 22 and I'm only turning 23 next month. And for me, it's always been like, first of all, I'm a female, so it's like, can I think one now? Like, like the, you know, this little girl, this little kid, what it, you know, I can't walk into a room and, and take for control over my things because I'm so young and I'm female, but I've always been self-driven. So I feel like, yeah, that's those have been the challenges so far. Highlights, I, I think, would be opening up for Kuli Chana, uh, Joe Thomas, when he came to Botswana. That was really awesome. I performed in Bampirstadt in South Africa, in Rustenburg. I performed in Johannesburg as well. Um, I got to meet Double HP, who's like a phenomenal human being and is my mentor, who's taught me a lot of life lessons. So that for me, throughout my career. And obviously, like, meeting people that remember something that I've written, you know, like they come back and recite my lyrics back to me and I'm thinking like, wow, somebody's actually listening and I'm actually making a difference in someone's life. So those have been my highlights. Well, um, I definitely want to get back on television. I want to start presenting again. I'm thinking of going back to, to radio actually to, you know, co-host a hip hop show. And um, definitely a clothing line is in the, is in the pipeline an album very very soon in the near future like September finally I haven't had an album this entire time so I'm gonna drop my first album and yeah definitely just a lot of like I, I also want to get into acting it's just here I don't know if I'm like more stage based I want to be more in front of the camera so yeah I only have eyes for one female. It's my best friend, Nature Inga. I see you, baby. <laughs> I am not a lesbian. <laughs> you know, maybe a little kiss here and there, but no, I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have a mother who is just so understanding and is very modern, and she's also a very liberated, empowered woman. So my concerns at first were like, oh my god, my mom is going to read this, or my grandmom, or this, but they fully understand. If my mom understands, then I don't have to explain myself to anyone, you know. And um, you don't choose who you fall in love with, or who you get into a relationship with. And it just, it, it gets irritating because most of the time people don't even have their facts straight. So that's what irks me, but yeah. What I've learned is to always have information on standby. You have to be smart as you're moving through a room full of vouchers. Like the industry is a jungle, you know, and it's either you're gonna be the prey or the predator, and you have to decide where you're going to place yourself. I've also learned to be a bit more patient with human beings. You know, I'm, I was always so angry. I used to get irritated. I want to reply every single little comment on the internet or retweet, you know, I mean, um, yeah, retweet and talk nonsense to uh, you know somebody like tweeting me or 
whatever, but I've learned to be a lot more patient and guarded and more aware of the fact that I have a platform that I need to use in a positive, in a more positive manner. The country has come a long way as much as the music industry in this country has come a long way. So I want to see a lot more celebration of the fact that we've just hit 50 years and we've done it in a, a peaceful manner. We gained our independence very peacefully. We didn't have to go through all sorts of, you know, shenanigans such as our fellow countries. So I feel like we, I'm really proud to be a Mazzano, to be honest with you. And of the fact, I don't know if I'm telling the story right, but I think it was in Mbaze where they created a barrier when people tried to come through and infiltrate the country. You know, and I want to see that pride again back in Botswana where it's like people are coming into the country, they're about to take our land. What are we going to do? You know what I mean? And now foreigners are starting to do it, not just in, you know, the war typical war kind of way, but foreigners are coming into the country and literally taking over our businesses, taking over our land. I feel like we just need to get our pride back as Batwana, you know, I mean, we've always stood for boto, humility, and, you know, I just want to see that happening again, you know, some, some people are caught up in just, you know, um, capitalism and, and being, you know, rich and powerful, but like we forgot what it meant to be an actual community, and I'd really like to see that changing this year. My most significant item is um, my grandfather's body warmer. It's so hot, it's so fashionable. Like I wear it sometimes with leggings and a cute pair of boots. But it's significant because um, the name Sasa Klaas actually came from my grandfather. His name was Klaas of the And he was the male figure in my life. He was pretty much my father. And he was a pastor. He taught me spirituality. He taught me, you know, um, the value of, of caring about the next person and putting love first and being, basically a humanitarian, so that's why it's a significant item to me. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackson. I always interrupted that.